This video is about the weighted Cohen's kappa. You will learn when to use it, how to calculate it and what the difference between linear and quadratic weighting is. What do you use the Cohen's kappa for? You use the Cohen's kappa whenever you want to know if two people's measurements agree. These two people measuring something are called raters. In the case of the normal Cohen's kappa, the variable to be measured by the two raters is a nominal variable. With a nominal variable, the expressions can be distinguished, but there is no ranking between the expressions. The Cohen's kappa takes into account whether or not the two raters measured the same thing, but it does not take into account the degree of disagreement. Now what if you don't have a nominal variable, but an ordinal one? If you have an ordinal variable, a variable in which the values can be ordered, then of course you want to take this order into account. Let's say your expressions are dissatisfied, neutral and satisfied. There is a smaller difference between satisfied and neutral than between dissatisfied and satisfied. If you want to take the size of the difference into account, you have to use the weighted Cohen's kappa. Therefore, if you have a nominal variable, you use Cohen's kappa. If it is an ordinal variable, you use the weighted Cohen's kappa. With this, we can now state the weighted Cohen's kappa is a measure of the agreement between two ordinally scaled samples. It is important to note that with Cohen's kappa, you can only make a statement about how reliably both raters measure the same thing, but you cannot make a statement about whether what the two raters measure is the right thing or not. So if both raters almost always measure the same, your Cohen's kappa would be very high. The Cohen's kappa does not tell you whether this measured value matches reality. For example, whether the right thing is being measured. In the first case, one speaks of the reliability and in the second case, one speaks of the validity. Now, of course, the question arises, how is Cohen's kappa calculated? Well, the answer is quite simple. You can either simply use DataTab and calculate the weighted kappa online or the second way is you can calculate it by hand and we will now go through both ways. First I'll show you which formulas you need for the weighted coins kappa and we'll go through these formulas with an example. Then I will show you how you can easily calculate the weighted coins kappa online with DataTab. Let's assume two doctors rated how satisfied they are with the success of the patient therapy. The doctors can answer with dissatisfied, neutral and satisfied. Now you want to know how big the agreement between the two doctors is. Since we have an ordinal variable here with the rank order dissatisfied, neutral and satisfied, we determine the agreement with the weighted Cohen's kappa. In the first case, we create a table with the frequencies of each response. Here we have our two raters, each of whom rated one person. Let's say a total of 75 patients were evaluated. Now let's count how many times each combination occurs. Let's say 17 times both raters answer dissatisfied, 8 times rater 1 answered dissatisfied and rater 2 answered neutral. Then we have 4 times that rater 1 answer dissatisfied and rater 2 answer satisfied and so on and so forth. For the ratings that lie on the diagonal, both raters agree. So what is the formula now for the weighted Cohen's kappa? Well, the weighted Cohen's kappa can be calculated with this formula. Here are the weighting factors. FO are the observed frequencies and FE are the expected frequencies. 
Instead of the frequencies, we could also use the calculated probabilities, for example, the observed probabilities, PO, and the expected probabilities, PE. We've just calculated the observed frequencies. You can see them in this table. If we would not use the frequencies, but the probabilities, we would simply divide each frequency by the number of patients, so for example 75, then we would have the observed probabilities. But now we need the weights and the expected frequencies. Let's start with the expected frequencies. To calculate the expected frequencies, we first calculate the rows and the columns sums. So we just sum up all the rows and all the columns. For example, in the first row we get a sum of 29 with 17 plus 8 plus 4. Now we divide this by 75, our total number of cases. Next, we can calculate the expected frequencies for each cell by multiplying the row probability by the column probability. So for the first cell we get 0.35 times 0.39 which is equal to 0.13. For the second cell 0.44 times 0.39 which is equal to 0.17. If we multiply each probability by 75, we get the expected frequencies. So now we have the observed and the expected frequencies. All that is needed now is the weighting matrix. If we did not use any weighting at all, our matrix would look like this. If both raters answer the same, there is zero in the cells. Otherwise, it would be one. It doesn't matter how far apart the raters answered, if they answered something different, it will be weighted with 1. But let's now look at the linear and the quadratic weighting. The linear weighting matrix can be calculated with this formula. Let E be the index for the rows and J for the columns. K is the number of categories, so in our case it is 3. So for the first cell we get 1 minus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 0. For this cell we get 2 minus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 0 0.5. And finally, for that cell we get 3 minus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. We can now do this for all other cells and we get this weighting matrix. This means that ratings that are close to one another are weighted less than ratings that are far apart. How does it look now with the quadratic weighting? If we do not use the linear but the quadratic weighting, the distances are simply squared again. This means that scores that are far apart are weighted even more heavily in relation to scores that are close together compared to the linear case. The weighting matrix then results in this matrix. So this cell results for example with 2 minus 1 squared divided by 3 minus 1 squared which is equal to 0.25. So with this we can now decide whether to use weighting or not and whether to use the linear weighting or the quadratic weighting. We will simply continue with the linear weighting now. So with this we can now calculate the weighted kappa. We have the weighting matrix, the observed frequency and the expected frequency. Let's start with the sum up here. We simply multiply each cell of the weighting matrix by the respective cell of the observed frequency and sum this up. So for example 0 times 17 plus 0 0.5 times 8 until finally 0 times 9. We just do the same with the weighting matrix and the expected frequency. 0 times 10.05 plus 0 0.5 times 12.76 until finally 0 times 3.84.
Now if we do all the calculations, this gives us a weighting capper of 0.396. And finally, I'll show you how you can easily calculate the weighted Cohen's capper for your data online with DataTab. In order to do this, you simply go to datadep.net and copy your own data into this table. Now you click on the Reliability tab. Datadep automatically tries to assign a scale level to your data. In this case, Datadep assumes that it is nominal data. If we would click on Rater 1 and Rater 2, Datadep would calculate the unweighted normal Cohen's kappa. But in our case, these are ordinal variables. So we simply change the scale level to ordinal. If we now click on both raters, the weighted Cohen's kappa is calculated. We can now choose whether we want to have a linear or a quadratic weighting. Here we can see the cross table which shows us how often the respective combinations occur. Then we get the results for the Cohen's kappa. With this data, we get a weighted Cohen's kappa of 0.5. If you're not sure how to interpret the results, you can just click on Summary in Words. An inter-rater reliability analysis was performed between the dependent samples of rater 1 and rater 2. For this purpose, the weighted Cohen's kappa was calculated, which is a measure of the agreement between two dependent ordinal scale samples. The weighted Cohen's kappa showed that there was a moderate agreement between samples rater 1 and rater 2 with k equals 0.5. Thanks for listening and I hope to see you soon.